So it's that time of the year in the Midwest. It's spring race season. Usually on my calendar, the Shamrock Shuffle 8K is the first race that I typically do. That kind of is the gateway into spring, summer, autumn training. But this year, we're doing something different. We're kicking it off with the March Madness Half Marathon. That's even like visible up there. March Madness Half Marathon. And I'm not ready for this half marathon. I'm having a bad day with shoe selection and it's all crashing down at once. Let's talk about what's going on and what the game plan is going to be moving forward. So if you haven't already, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already are subscribed and following this content, thanks so much, love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Strava for all sorts of other updates related to racing, life, and all that kind of fun jazz. So without further ado, let's begin. So the March Madness Half Marathon. This is a weird course. Uh, it's pretty close to my house, kind of still a distance away, but it's out in uh, Cary, Illinois. It's a race I've heard of many times while I was still living in Chicago. And I guess it gets its reputation for, one, being a weird time of the year like this, like pre-spring kind of season. And two, the layout of the course being absolutely insane. And I'll speak from firsthand experience for testing the course and like running segments of it. Like this is not a course that is for the faint. I definitely don't feel like I'm ready for this course at all. I feel like I'm maybe 50% ready for the half marathon season and trying out this course and knowing what's going to be happening in the next couple of days has got me really nervous and I expect to totally die on this course. Uh, you know, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be great, okay? I'm so excited for the race season and like following that, as we can see on the calendar, Following the March Madness Half Marathon, I then end up going to Montreal for work. And then I'm gone for like a couple of days. And then immediately when I come back, the Shamrock Shuffle kicks in. Isn't that crazy? And then I take a week off from racing and all those things. And I got to go do some work certification things related to uh, SANS University. So for those in the tech or cybersecurity field, SANS certs. Very important if your boss is paid for them. Make sure you get those done. And then we go to Charleston to race the Cooper River 10K like a week after the Shamrock Shuffle. Or it's two weeks after, but including travel, it's like a week and a half before things kind of pick up again. So that's the calendar for the next couple of weeks. But we have some massive dilemmas. Number one, fitness is still not where I need it to be. I think I can understand a couple of the reasons why this would be the case. Uh, of course, number one is the training is not at 100% of where I wanted it to be. That being said, it's like, you know, more key workouts in terms of like speed, uh, more key workouts in terms of distance. So not being afraid of doing runs that are 10 miles or more during the course of the week, trying to do at least two of those. I've been not avoiding those longer runs, but there's been like mental time constraints where I've not been able to put in those workouts as much as I want to. But that being said, it's not stopping me from racing this Saturday during the uh, you know, March Madness Half Marathon. It's just I'm completely aware now that there's like stresses involved with maybe working remote that would cause such a thing where it's like you're sitting in front of your computer or computer good you're sitting in front of good screen over on this side for me where you could be like watching YouTube, putting videos together, working on something else, maybe playing some games or something, and just creeping to you on this side is bad screen, which is work computer, which has other projects and things that are going to be done because there's deadlines and you're stressing about those things and you find yourself at like 10 or 11 p.m. turning to bad screen and working when you should be really just staring at good screen. And what happens there is you end up staying late working on other projects and you think, oh cool, I got this thing done. 50 million other things to go instead of just building your, uh, you know, using your time appropriately for sleep, for fun, for work. And as a result, it kind of blends all together. And th there's massive sacrifices that are made along the way for various gains in different places. So where I gain things maybe in work, now I'm losing in sleep. Maybe now I'm losing in time and fitness. So as a result, this is like the craziest tangent ever. What I'm trying to get at is the training I wanted to do for my half marathons is not where I needed to be just because I'm falling into like these pitfalls that I should have avoided at least have been better about avoiding two years ago and I'm now kind of like in a slippery slope now. 
And, like, it's not to say that in 2018, 2019, this would have been a case because I was working on site, working with, like, physical labor. So once work is put down, you kind of go away and you do your thing and then you come back the next day and work. And plus it was work early in the morning, too, starting at, like, 7 a.m. So whole different story, whole different workout, sleeping regimens, wake-up things. Here it's just, it's a blur. And it's a pitfall I find myself stuck in for the last year and a half that I'll eventually work my way out of. It'll be slow, it'll be gradual, and sometimes you just need a good kick in the rear, doing something that scares you in order to start fixing that, you know what I mean? So running this half marathon at like eight in the morning when I'm not a morning person anymore is probably a good place to start. Okay, so we got all of that sorted out. Course map, I'll post it somewhere here. I managed to run about 15K of this course around like the outer perimeter. I didn't do any of like the there and back sections and like this one little hill section there. But as you can probably see from the course map, it's pretty straightforward. It's on a bunch of roads. And um, it's it's nice. It's pretty. It is on main roads. But there's some hill sections that I know for a fact are going to destroy me. Like there's zero expectation that I'll run a sub 130 at all during this race. Nor do I expect to. Okay. If I can run sub 145, 150, I think I had a good day. And that's just being generous towards how bad my training is, calculating for slower sections of this course while doing gradual hills, while doing full send climbs. Like, the good payoff here is that if I can survive this course, doing this Shamrock Shuffle and then the Cooper River Bridge Run in the couple of weeks afterwards will kind of feel like a walk in the park from an endurance perspective. Now, to get the speed right for those particular races, there's going to have to be some key workouts in between that I might end up doing in Montreal, that I might end up doing like the week that I'm back. It There's going to have to be like some corrections to ensure that the spring race calendar isn't a complete failure rather than one giant rust buster, if you kind of catch my drift. So, those are some of the internal issues that have been going on with my running schedule now let's talk about some of the things from a super shoe perspective that have me very concerned and frustrated with nike in particular so yeah nike i know you're not paying me for any of these videos but guess what uh we've got problems massive problems so this hasn't been revealed yet there's going to be a video that's going to come out in june that i recorded i think in late january kind of describing all this you'll kind of see it's a progress report and i talk about how this like shoe that resembles well it's the vaporfly next percent two it's this like cotton candy colored shoe watermelon kind of scheme uh for their color how this shoe has like less than 100 miles and what's happening is that i'm seeing the worst damage i think i've ever seen on a vaporfly next percent two like the upper is ripping off the foam and it's causing the ride of the shoe to feel like a total brick and the shoe has felt like a brick since day one of using them. And I don't know if it's because the shoe is just manufactured differently. If the material choices on the shoe are just, you know, completely different than its, you know, predecessor uh, model here, which would have been this Vaporfly Next% 2. And the reason I know their predecessors is because if you're going to trust the manufacturing tags... This one was manufactured on February 5th of 2021. And I bought this from Stox or StockX, whichever one you prefer to call it. Uh, I think in late 2023, this was going to be my 2023 Chicago Marathon race shoe. And for obvious reasons, the marathon did not happen. And um, I liked the ride of the shoe a lot. It was not the best Vaporfly Next person I've ever uh, run in, but you know, it felt great. It was just an awesome shoe overall. And there was nothing bad to say about this. It is at about 250 miles. Some of it is treadmill, so there's still life in the shoe, as you can maybe see in the rubber. I just don't fully trust it right now for a race day scenario. If I had to, I think I could do, you know, a, a half marathon at least in this shoe. But, like, there are other options to consider here, right? So, this Vaporfly Next% 2 manufactured... Uh, March 19th, 21. Is that correct? Why do, why do I feel like these are two different shoes, then? Yeah, it is March 19th. Uh, oh, there we go. No, it's got a June 17th date. That's what this is. That's the quarter in which this shoe was being manufactured, I think, within Nike. is between March and June. So it was like that manufactured bundle. 
And what's happening there is maybe there's a change of materials. Something there where, like, the shoe... I've lost faith, basically, in this Vaporfly Next% percent too, and I'm, like, completely sad that this shoe is now going to have to get out of my race day lineups because it's changed that drastically where I can't even trust it for, like, a couple of days before a half marathon. And there are solutions now to this that I think I've already kind of discussed one point, which is find an older Vaporfly Next% percent 2 model, try to run in that shoe. Option two, which is also a set backup plan, which I'm not totally a fan of, is the Vaporfly Next% percent 3 as my race day shoe. Now, I did buy this shoe hoping it could be the successor to my Vaporfly Next% percent 2. I like the shoe. It's not the world's greatest uh, replacement, I would say. Again, this is just my opinion. I know a lot of people like it because the toe box is a little bit wider and it's got slight improvements. I saw this shoe as like a slight down step from the Vaporfly Next% percent 2 just because I liked really subtle things about the Vaporfly Next% percent 2. But I can still race in this shoe. I don't hate it as much as I think I do, where I wouldn't lace this up and go for it on the course. In fact, I did run my 15K in this shoe. Felt for the most part smooth. Like, when all is said and done and all the banter about racing shoes is, like, pushed to the side, like, you know what will work and you know what will not work in, like, an emergency scenario. And this will work in, emer in an emergency scenario, okay? Sure, we've got a lot of stress, you know, uh, on the foam already from multiple miles. I think there's like about 150 to 200 plus miles on this shoe as is, but it will still get the job done should I push this thing to half marathon status. Now, that's option two. Option three, this is the unpopular. There, well, three and four are my two unpopular options, but here they go. I bought a brand new pair of race day shoes based on historical experiences with different brands. The Adi Zero uh, Adios Pro 3 was a shoe that I just bought for emergency reasons, but also as a shoe that I want to review and test on this channel. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's very similar built to the Boston Series Adidas shoe. And because I trusted the Boston 11 and the Boston 12 as like consistent every day to speed trainers and understanding that this is the race day version of those shoes, I bought this to give it a spin today, specifically during my run. And if I like it enough after a 10K, there is strong consideration that I will use this on the half marathon this coming weekend. Strong consideration. I know it's not the world's most recommended decision to, you know, race with a brand new shoe after, you know, or like a week before race. But I don't have too many choices when my preferred race day shoe is a giant flop that's fallen apart in real time in less than 100 miles, right? So, Adi Zero, Adios Pro 3, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, if this is a good shoe. If I like the Boston 11 and Boston 12, can I lace this thing up and have a good race day? You guys let me know. So, that's option three. Option four, again, kind of in the similar vein of the Adio Pro 3, is trying to get the Vaporfly, or not the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly 3, which I believe is sold out on Nike right now, but starting, I think, in April, they're going to release the new color variant for the public. And I do want to get my hands on a pair of Alpha Fly 3s because they do actually look promising on paper. The people that have reviewed them so far like the shoes as well. So there's a lot of potential there as well to be the successor at least for me to the vaporfly next percent two so fingers crossed that maybe nike hasn't completely lost it because what i've been seeing from their products as of late including now their race products has got me really sad and i'm losing faith in a brand that i've used since at least late 2017 early 2018 regularly so that's kind of the situation. Um, hopefully this spring season won't be the worst race season of my life, but I am completely aware that my race fitness is not where I need it to be. Training has been okay at best, but the key workouts have not gone as planned, and that's why the improvements internally have not been seen. But like, it's not that I'm gonna not be able to finish a half marathon, it's just I won't be able to finish it the way I want to, which would be better than I have 
ever in my life. So the upward progression has kind of faltered and has dipped down a little bit. And it's not that I've peaked at some point. It's just the training has not gone in the direction that I wanted it to because of my issues, right? Nothing external, my issues. So once I can fix those, we can start fixing, you know, everything else revolving around running, around work, around my sleep, recovery, life, things like that. So this is just a big rant, just the upcoming race game plan and my thoughts on some of the running shoes that kind of come out. It's been a minute since I made a video, so I just kind of threw a lot of thoughts together at once and this is kind of what we've got. So are you racing the March Madness Half Marathon if you live in the Chicagoland area? I mean, let me know. Um, thoughts on the shoes that I was just talking about? Is the Adios Pro 3 like the move? Is the Vaporfly Next% 3 the move if I'm like comfortable in this shoe? Uh, Vaporfly and X% percent twos. Have you guys gotten these models that are manufactured in that like February to June 21 time span that like absolutely suck? Let me know. Let's let's just talk about stuff. If you want to roast me in the comments, I don't care. That's kind of fun too. I'll roast you right back. I'll try to. We'll see. Um, if you stuck around to the end of this video, let's talk about. Um, how much you spend on Amazon weekly. That's what we're gonna do. Put that you spend $1,200 on Amazon. That's what you'll say in the comments. Okay, that's all we got. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.